Peace be upon you, ninth graders. Today we will be learning how to identify some constituents in our food. But before we start, prepare the following materials. A notebook and a pen, your support guide, and of course a phone or a laptop. Make sure that you sit in a quiet place, prepare your tools, stay optimistic during study and take notes, watch the video more than once, and ask your teacher for more clarification. At the end of this video, you will be able to describe identification tests of some substances and identify the constituents of some types of food based on the identification tests. So let's get started. The adjacent figure represents a food label of a certain product. As you see, this food contains different constituents. How were the manufacturers able to identify the constituents of this food? In the previous video, we classified the food into six food groups. So basically, food is classified into proteins, carbohydrates, lipids, water, vitamins, and minerals. In this video, we will learn how to apply some identification tests that are used to identify certain substances and food. So what's an identification test? It is a test performed in order to identify the presence of a substance in the food under study. There are two expected results, a positive and a negative one. Positive results include a change in color, precipitate formation, or any other change like the appearance or disappearance of something. However, negative results include any change or result other than the expected result. We will start with the iodine test. The iodine solution is a solution of brown-orange color. The type of food identified in this test is starch. Procedure. Add some drops of iodine solution on the food. Observe the result. The color of iodine solution changes from brown-orange into dark blue. Note that dark blue is the expected result. So, the test is positive and we conclude that bread contains starch. But before we move on to the second test, let's recall the classification of carbohydrates. In the previous video, we classified carbohydrates into polysaccharides, disaccharides or double sugars, and monosaccharides or simple sugars. The disaccharides include maltose, lactose, and sucrose, whereas the monosaccharides include glucose, fructose, and galactose. Note that all double and simple sugars are reducing sugars except sucrose. Let's proceed now with Fehling test. The Fehling solution is a solution of blue color. Note that the Fehling solution is composed of two solutions, Fehling A and Fehling B. The type of food identified is reducing sugar, like glucose. Procedure. Put some honey in a test tube. Add some drops of Fehling solution into the tube. Heat the tube for a few minutes. Observe the result. The blue color of filling solution disappears and a brick red precipitate is formed. Note that the brick red precipitate is the expected result. So, the test is positive and we conclude that honey contains a reducing sugar. We will continue with Bayerit test. The Bayerit solution is a solution of blue color. It is composed of copper sulfate and sodium hydroxide. The type of food identified is protein. Procedure. Add few drops of copper sulfate solution into the test tube containing the food sample, milk for example. Then add few drops of sodium hydroxide. Observe the result. The blue color of biorit solution changes into violet. Note that violet is the expected result. So, the test is positive and we conclude that milk contains protein. The fourth identification test is the translucent spot test. It is a test done using paper. Type of food identified, lipids. Procedure. Put some oil on a piece of paper. Observe the result. A translucent spot appears on the paper. Note that translucent spot is the expected result. So, the test is positive and we conclude that oil contains lipids. Note the difference between the spot made by water and that made by cooking oil. After a while, the spot made by water will dry out while that of cooking oil will be permanent. Let's proceed with the water test. It is a test done by heating. 
type of food identified, water. Procedure. Put some breadcrumbs in a test tube and heat it. Observe the result. Water droplets appear on the inner side of the test tube. Note that the appearance of water droplets is the expected result. So, the test is positive and we conclude that bread contains water. And finally, we have the salt test. It is a test performed using silver nitrate, which is a colorless solution. Type of food identified chloride salts, like NaCl. Procedure. Put some breadcrumbs in a test tube. Add the salt water. Add few drops of silver nitrate solution. Observe the result. A white precipitate is formed. Note that the white precipitate is the expected result. So, the test is positive and we conclude that bread contains salt. Now, let's apply what we have learned. Several identification tests were done on cow's milk and the results are shown in the table below. First of all, indicate the color change obtained in each test. With the iodine test, the result was negative, so no color change took place and the obtained color is brown-orange. For the Fehling test, the result was positive, color changes, and we obtain a brick-red precipitate. For the biorid test, the result is also positive, the color changes, and we obtain a violet color. Note that a procedure is a step-by-step -step guide to direct the reader through a task. So, a written procedure is a list of steps without mentioning the result. Write the procedure followed in applying filling test. Put some milk in a test tube. Add few drops of filling solution. Heat the test tube for few minutes. Observe the result. Now, interpret the results given in the table. Note that interpret means analyze plus give a significance. Iodine test gave a negative result. This means that cow's milk does not contain starch. However, the link test gave a positive result. This means that cow's milk contains reducing sugar. Similarly, Byrid test gave a positive result. This means that cow's milk contains proteins. While describing, make sure to mention the food to be tested, the identification test, and the expected result. Describe the test used to identify the presence of lipids in milk. Put a drop of milk on a paper. If a translucent spot appears, then milk contains lipids. Let's sum it up. In the iodine test, the initial color of the solution is brown-orange. It will turn into a dark blue color indicating the presence of starch. In the Fehling test, the initial color of the solution is blue. After heating, there will be formation of brick-red precipitate, indicating the presence of reducing sugar. In the Byrid test, the initial color of the solution is blue. It will turn into violet, indicating the presence of proteins. In the translucent spot test, there is no color because it is done using paper. So we will observe a translucent spot, indicating the presence of lipids. In the water test, also we have no color because it is done using heating. And there will be formation of water droplets indicating the presence of water. And finally, in the salt test, we use silver nitrate solution, which is colorless. And we obtain a white precipitate indicating the presence of salt. And finally, you will be assigned to memorize the identification test table page 2 on the subword guide of life sciences. Solve exercise 5, page 9 on the subword guide. This is all dear. Hope you enjoyed the lesson. Study well and keep safe.